Welcome all to Mahindra Insurance Brokers Limited uh, session on navigating the perils of sea in marine insurance. Uh, in the audience today are people representing the supply chain function and a few finance chiefs as well. Uh, on behalf of Program Acacia and Mahindra Insurance Brokers Limited, I'd like to welcome you all and thank you for taking time out uh, to attend today's session, which is rather unique as we don't really get to see a lot of events around uh, marine and especially around marine insurance. And, you know, the whole ideology stems from the fact that ships and ports these days are the arteries of the global economy. And nobody can deny uh, the role which globalization is playing uh, in increasing uh, interdependency between countries. Uh, the oceans are connecting every continent uh, in the world. And based on this, they present a great opportunity to transport goods. However, while uh, you know we all understand and realize that oceans offer great means for shipping, there are also a lot of hazards that can go along with sea transport. Uh, to name a few. Sorry, sir, you're saying something? No, no, you continue, continue. Uh, okay. You could you could put yourself on mute, sir. I'll introduce you. Uh, sorry about that interruption. So lack of safety while transporting goods uh, to their destinations for trade is one of the biggest opportunity areas uh, for business owners. Uh, the other thing which uh, is buzzing around the supply chain scenario is climate change, which in fact now is a reality. Uh, and it impacts businesses not only here, but around the world. We uh, understand from abundant research, which is available, that around 85% of global trade is now carried by sea. And billions and billions of tons of cargo ships are being moved every year across oceans and seas, which has a massive impact on the global economy. Uh, modern day traders are also relying more and more on sea routes for transportation and businesses are adapting newer methods uh, of say cutting costs and you know while they're cutting costs correspondingly there is an increased uh, risk which is involved take for example uh, the trend of say increasing the size of the vessel the ships and the size that they used to be to what they are now uh, so that you know they can accommodate more goods now, while this comes across as a very lucrative option uh, from an operational cost standpoint, it also increases the risk of damaging the goods uh, which are on board. So marine cargo insurance is not only integral, but also provides protection uh, to cargo owners as it covers any physical loss or damage caused to the cargo while in transit or any shortages uh, which are incidental to transit from one place to another. Uh, on that note, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, that, that was just us trying to set some context for the discussion which lies ahead. Uh, we are grateful to Mahindra Insurance Brokers Limited who've supported us to put this event together. Mahindra Insurance Brokers Limited, uh, I'm sure they need no introduction, but they are one of the few insurance broking companies in India uh, to have been awarded the prestigious ISO uh, certification for quality management systems. Uh, and the company provides direct insurance broking for corporate and retail customers. I'd like to welcome uh, Ravi Chandran sir, who is the practice leader on the Marine side with Mahindra Insurance Brokers Limited. He's a qualified associate from the Insurance Institute of India with 20 years of experience in the insurance sector. He specializes in underwriting, claims management, and product development, and has a flair for techno marketing. Uh, Ravi sir, stage is yours. Please uh, go ahead. Uh, I've already done your introduction, but maybe you could walk us through uh, your keynote, which which probably talks about booming global trade opportunities and threats uh, for marine insurance. Sir, you're on mute, sir. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome you all uh, for this webinar on uh, navigating the perils uh, at sea. Uh, uh, I'm Ravi Chandran. I'm the practice head as uh, uh, joined the Mahindra Insurance Broking recently, and I have uh, uh, worked as a marine underwriter over a period of uh, 20 years uh, uh, in different insurance companies with a overall career experience of around 28 years in the insurance industry. So in this topic, so we can go through uh, 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 we can go through the uh, uh, the perils in this webinar. The contents will be what actually I will be covering would be the uh, overview of economy, both global as well as uh, Indian economy, uh, and the geopolitical uh, uh, tensions or the situations which is prevailing currently in the, the globe, which is affecting the trade. And the thirdly, it will be the climate, which is also and climate change is also an important factor, which is influencing the uh, trade. To start with, uh, as you all know that uh, the global economy is passing through a turbulent phase and uh, it uh, various uh, disasters has struck with the onset of uh, this current decade uh, the first uh, onslaught was from a pa pandemic called covid 19 which totally disturbed the uh, global economy and the balance trade balances between the countries uh, because of covid uh, there were huge casualties in uh, life that is the, the you know, there were huge death across the world uh, which was an unknown enemy uh, uh, suddenly uh, 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 waging a war in the global uh, uh, population so there was a huge uh, 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 destruction of life uh, because uh, no medicines were available no vaccines were available and suddenly stripped so this has resulted uh, in a chaos uh, in the uh, initial days of the uh, current decade decade so many company uh, countries try to you know, fight the uh, you know, fight this covid uh, through different uh, uh, different methods so one of them adopted was uh, the, the lockdown to announce the lockdown many governments uh, across the world had announced lockdown uh, announced a lockdown in order to uh, prevent the spread of virus uh, virus so which in turn impacted the uh, trade uh, between the countries the goods produced in one part of the world was not able to reach the other part of the world because of uh, the lockdown non availability of containers uh, non clearance of uh, non availability of this vessel uh, 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 non availability of the vessel clearances were not happening in the port because of the lockdown so this was one of the uh, uh, major challenge which the global in, uh, economy faced india is also not an aligned to this and india was had also equally suffered like other countries but however we were fast enough to uh, uh, devise a strategy for fighting the uh, uh, COVID virus. And uh, uh, so we were successful in coming out of the, the COVID, uh, 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 the, uh, we were successfully coming out of the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, so once the first wave was over, we also had a, a tremendous casualties, but in compared to other parts of the world, we were far better uh, uh, in terms of the uh, 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 number of deaths and other uh, aspect. So uh, then before the onset of the second, uh, 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 second wave, we were successful enough to, uh, 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 we were invent the barrier, uh, uh, we, we had come out with uh, uh, vaccinations and more than 70% uh, of our populations who are infected, who can be infected were vaccinated. And that gave us the leverage to fight the second wave. And on the uh, third wave, uh, that is o Omicron wave, when it hit, the in intensity was just a mere uh, cough or cold, which was uh, like a compared like a normal flu. That was because of the effective uh, uh, effective vaccines which we have produced. Even other countries have produced, 
but uh, we were able to get it at a uh, better price and better quality at a uh, 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 short period of time we were able to develop and we not only uh, 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 vaccinated our own population but also we were trying to export the surplus to other countries as a, uh, a token of humanity and following our principle on vasudeva kutumbakam that is world is one family so based on that we were able to distribute free vaccinations to the friendly countries countries which are friendly to us and which are neutral to us and also which do not like us so we have uh, we able to distribute the um, vaccination this is how we fought and came out of the covid uh, uh, then but, however because of covid there were many economies like uh, uh, one of our neighbor sri lanka who their economies who was tried on tourism had to succumb to the covid and their economy collapsed and other neighbors uh, like uh, pakistan bangladesh they are also on the verge of uh, collapse uh, they, they are yet to come up to the terms uh, the, so because of the impact of the covid so uh, this was covid was one of the major uh, event which disturbed the uh, world trade global trade and commerce and not only that so the second one was that the climate change which is also an another uh, important feature which has impact on the global trade because of the climate change global warming and all so that there is a frequency in uh, increase or frequency in uh, cyclone events that uh, catastrophic perils like uh, Uh, cyclone your floods for example Ch chennai uh, 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 chennai floods kerala floods were example in india like uh, frequent uh, uh, cyclones can or were witnessed in eastern coast of orissa uh, west bengal etc so uh, another uh, important aspect which has an impact on uh, uh, the global trade is the climate change uh, 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 so uh, other point is that uh, uh, whenever the cyclone hits in the west coast or in the eastern coast the huge uh, uh, accumulate a huge property has been accumulated cargo has been accumulated in the port premises so they uh, uh, so they had uh, there was a loss a lot of huge uh, uh, huge losses and damage caused in the port premises so the third point which which is another important aspect of which is getting uh, which the global economy is getting affected is the global economic uh, the geopolitical situation like war between ukraine and russia implication of sanction to many countries by united nations us or european union uh, uh, because of different uh, as on different angles and different aspects different type of sanction being levied in different countries so this has also disturbed the world uh, 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 trade uh, recently ukraine Uh, for example ukraine and russia they they were contributing uh, uh, they were the major exporters of agricultural products to europe and africa and other parts of the world which has now got totally disturbed because of this uh, uh, the, the, the ukraine and russia war so you know, the the crude prices has gone up then the inflation has gone up so tremendously there is a shortage of food and uh, uh, fuel also so uh, this is another aspect which is uh, uh, affecting the uh, uh, trade balance between uh, the countries in the world uh, so uh, the, these are the challenges uh, uh, which the global trade is facing so uh, uh, the, uh, this trouble uh, Uh, this uh, these are the uh, 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 important factors which are affecting the globe uh, global trade uh, uh, trade uh, global trade and uh, the commerce uh, yeah shantanu well thank you um, so you know while you touched upon uh, the three challenges i think uh, from an audience standpoint everybody will benefit from a, a more diverse perspective so we will get started with our next panel discussion 
uh, I would request the people who are logged in, the audience, to please stay online for the next 60 seconds. We'll quickly go backstage and get uh, the panel live. Uh, we promise to come back in under a minute. Thank you, Ravi, sir. We just stay connected and uh, I'll, I'll take you backstage. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for joining our panel discussion, which talks about the future of shipping and marine insurance in a changed business landscape. I'd like to probably correct that a little bit in a constantly changing business landscape is more like it. Uh, I mean, disruption is the new normal and I don't think it's ending anytime soon. Um, for the benefit of the audience, uh, I'll quickly introduce our distinguished panel members. I've got uh, Mr. Sibesh Sain, who's the Executive Vice President with HDFC Ergo. I've got Akhil Srivastava, who's the Director of Supply Chain. I've got Rahul Sharma, who's the CFO and Head Supply Chain. And of course, moderating the session is Ravi Sir, who's the Practice Leader, Marine with Mahindra Insurance Brokers Limited. Uh, Ravi Sir, over to you. I'll be asking you Q&A, questions and answers from the audience, if any, towards the end of your discussion. Yeah. Any, any reason why I can't see Akhil? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll try and get him looped in. You get started with the session. I'll bring okay. Akhil in as quickly as possible. Uh, that's okay. Can we start the session now? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. In the interest of time, we should start the session. Yeah. So, the, uh, the, Mr. Sibesh, the first question will be to you. Uh, you need to throw a light to, to the uh, on the light on the question that how the uh, insurance underwriters. Uh, will be able to deal with this geo uh, geopolitical uh, scenario and the sanctions imposed because what happens is that uh, whenever the sanctions is imposed or a war like situation war is there currently which example is uh, uk ukraine and uh, russia so then the movement of goods gets affected uh, uh, so then how the marine underwriters are able to help the business uh, leaders or the business houses uh, to protect their cargo while and how they can uh, ensure that uh, uh, the, uh, if in case of any eventuality or calamity uh, or the loss of the cargo uh, the, the insurance company will come ahead and support them financially by paying the claims this is what my first question to you sir uh, thanks, Ravi. Uh, let me try and put this uh, in uh, a couple of points. Uh, most importantly, we as reinsurance uh, companies are bound by the laws of the land as much as the uh, insured themselves. So if, uh, for instance, you raise the issue of uh, the uh, Ukraine war, now uh, there are multiple sanctions that are there on uh, Russia and Belarus. So first and foremost, I think... Uh, almost all reinsurers and insurance companies first and foremost said that they would not be covering shipments to uh, around 200 nautical miles of the war zone and uh, which means uh, your black sea uh, transits to either ukraine or to the southern russian ports were all closed from an insurance perspective at least the international ones refused to insure and it was rightfully so because uh, the danger situation was pretty dangerous and nobody wanted uh, loss of life or loss of cargo because uh, war is uh, quite a catastrophic situation and uh, we all have limited capacities on tomorrow paying some losses so uh, in that war zone of course no insurance company was giving any cover then uh, some of the reinsurers, because uh, right now the sanctions are of various types. There are the OFAC sanctions, which the US imposes. There is a EU sanction, which the European Union sanctions. Today now there's a UK sanction and there is a UN sanction. All multiplied together led to a situation where some of the reinsurers said that they would exclude all shipments coming in or going out of Russia, Ukraine and Belarus, RUB. Russia, Ukraine, Belarus were completely off the bounds. Some insurers did not have this limitation, but some of the insur most of the insurers had this limitation. So uh, I'm talking about when this uh, came around, this was around the month of March and April, when the uh, uh, India is highly dependent upon uh, a couple of items from this area. One would be uh, fertilizer, then is coal, crude, steel, 
I think those are the four major commodities uh, that we actually import from this area. Uh, exports are there, but then uh, imports are very, very vital for the economy of the country. For instance, fertilizer, which was essential for the farmers because the Kharif season was coming and they had to sow the seeds, they needed fertilizers. So I think uh, since the reinsurance fraternity had said no to insuring this, you will be uh, pleasantly surprised that the Indian insurance companies along with GIC, that is the national re, came together and pooled in and created a cargo pool, marine cargo pool, and which had a capacity of about 500 crores, which they could write risk. So other than the very large crude shipments, most of the shipments which were to come out of these places with regard to fertilizer, coal, steel, even crude up to this point, we said we would insure them uh, within the pool. There were certain rates, terms and conditions given. So we were able to tide over the major uh, energy requirements and agricultural requirements of the people. Now the question is, we were also exporting to Russia a lot many other things. And uh, so now the problem is that uh, while uh, India still continues the rupee ruble trade and is not affected too much by the swift restrictions that are there. So some amount of trade is still continuing, but a vast majority of this trade that is happening from Russia, especially the imports into India are being insured by Russian uh, insurers and uh, it's only the last leg, which is the India leg, which is being insured by the Indian company. So uh, while definitely there is a bit of a disruption, but at least uh, a stopgap arrangement has been made for uh, shipments to and from Russia right now. And on an exceptional basis, some of the insurers are also taking on some uh, risks on their own, which they feel small this uh, uh, one air to air shipment, 50 lakhs, 60 lakhs people are doing on their own. Uh, and because those don't go into the reinsurance treaty at all. So to that extent, I think uh, the disruption has been managed. And uh, suddenly, if you have now seen India has become the, uh, Russia has become the largest importer from where we are importing crude. 28% of our crude now is coming from Russia. And all the major uh, Indian, uh, the refiners and everybody is getting the Russian crude quite uh, reasonably priced. And we are able to... Uh, support the economy as such so definitely there are disruptions but we can take care a similar situation did arise uh, some time ago when the middle east always flares up whether it is uh, yemen sometimes some of the gulf areas so uh, instead of completely excluding uh, risks of war uh, the insurance companies got together and they said okay we will charge a little higher price for war and we will give you the cover Looking at that there were no losses in this phase, the, that rate has also been halved recently. So I think uh, to that extent, uh, we are able to cover up. Uh, with regard to Russia, nowadays there's a bit more other additional pressure that we currently face is uh, that uh, the Russian fleet, uh, which had Russian uh, class, earlier uh, this was among the 13 approved classification societies, suddenly they have uh, said it's no longer uh, approved classification society. So we do have challenges because all the treaties have classification, but uh, since uh, most of the imports are coming in Russian vessels insured by the Russian insurers, I don't think it is too much of an issue right now. I think uh, we've been able to tie it up. Hopefully some of the restrictions may ease or whether they will ease or they will continue in the same fashion, we don't know. We just hope uh, we all pray that the war, war-like situation comes to an end and uh, things get normalized. Yeah, def thank you, Mr. Sivesh. Yeah, definitely the war is likely to come. We all hope that the war will war will end soon. And with that too, with the efforts of India, because the entire world countries are uh, uh, looking at India to, uh, to talk to Russia, use their uh, influence on in resolving or in at least stopping the war as early as possible. And uh, our government is also on job to uh, uh, put their efforts to... Uh, uh, to, to ensure that this war is stopped as early as possible. And one more thing to my audience, 
that uh, 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 thanks for giving the insight uh, by sibesh saying that uh, whenever you uh, there is whenever there is a shipment to a sanctioned country you can approach the uh, the insurance company and seeing their advice whether they can cover they will be able to provide the situation uh, provide some solution as mr sibesh sen said the entire indian market entire marine underwriters stood up to the occasion and they stood by the indian business so that the trade uh, in india doesn't get affected uh, whether it is an import or whether it is an export uh, the maximum uh, care has been taken so that uh, the damages are minimum or the restrictions are minimum. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sibesh. On Just this one more point. Apart yeah. from Russia, there are other countries which also have certain sanctions. But uh, please remember, uh, the sanctions are not so uh, strong other than for, let's say, Iran and North Korea. Rest of the countries, it is, it is a few entities or individuals who are sanctioned. So if you were to go back to your insurance company and ask them that this is my buyer whom I, to whom I'm selling the goods, are you okay with it? Maybe they will do a quick check of the OFAC. Uh, you can check and find out if the entity is not in that list. Then maybe uh, those can also be uh, insurers can insure those shipments as well to those countries. So it's not a completely a no no yeah. other than for let's say uh, Iran and North Korea where people have a huge apprehensions. The rest are uh, uh, individual based and entity based sanctions. And few are commodity based also, sir. That like in certain countries, like you cannot uh, support import shipments of uh, weapons or something relating to uh, the nuclear material or something. But rest Sorry. of the things uh, definitely you can go ahead. So my audience, uh, uh, it is an advice to the audience that whenever you have a, uh, a shipment to sanctioned country, you can do approach the uh, insurance company and tell them what is the commodity and what type of uh, 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 customer you are going to ship uh, uh, who is going to be the consignee and all so uh, they may help you and they may provide coverages rather than saying that uh, a total no to the sanctioned countries so the, now the situation has changed and our underwriters are standing up to the occasion to help the business to take india forward and the trade forward uh, thank you mr sibesh the next question is to mr akhil uh, shivastav uh, welcome akhil uh, we, uh, we would like to know that uh, what was the impact of uh, uh, COVID on the logistic industry uh, uh, right from first wave, second wave and till and uh, post uh, COVID this uh, Ukraine and uh, uh, Russian war. So how the logistic industry has affected and how the uh, challenges of shortage in containers were met by you during the COVID period. This is your uh, topic. Sure. Uh, thanks, Ravi, uh, for the question and uh, uh, thanks, Subesh, for getting some clarity. I'll get in touch with you for sure. There, there are a lot of things which we as a beer manufacturer have issues around getting clearances and in food grade, etc., you know, certificate of origination from certain countries, etc. Uh, getting back to the question, uh, Ravi, uh, uh, a disclaimer, like I, I work with AB InBev, which is the world's biggest producer of beer. Right, which means I have globally 190 breweries across 110 countries servicing, including certain areas which are conflict areas as well for you know various reasons. So what we saw last three years have really evolved. And I would say how they have evolved is, uh, if you know about a concept of called bullwhip effect, wherein the demand distortion on the downline, which is you and I as consumers, result into a lot of supply distortion at the top right, uh, has impacted a lot of renewed and re re-aged thinking in logistics and supply chain teams overall, especially if you're handling a product-based supply chain. Now, there were five key fundamental things which changed with in last three years. One, COVID, all of we know about it, but resulting from COVID were the escalations of commodities, the cost overall in the commodities, the container visibility, and the most important thing, the conflict, right? So we call it in logistics parlance, the five C's, right? And those five C's are what Sibesh was trying to tell in terms of the insurance, how the insurance can impact at least some of them, if not all of them. Now, what happened over the last three years, wave one, uh, very frankly, uh, right from the US concept of people stacking a lot of tissue papers, right? 
which were a supply and demand gap to a process of people probably trying to find beer in india because beer was not a essential food commodity right uh, it's only food and medicines if you qualify it uh, and hence we had a lot of issues because beer does expire and this happened in march and that's my peak season because people generally drink beer in the you know peak of the summer from march to june so imagine my plight having so much of stock on wheels in places in brewery and no no place to sell it and distribute it that resulted in a lot of obsolescence or so called supply chain losses of inventory could have been covered by insurance as an example we were not prepared about it and we could not do it uh, secondly we we became a bit more learned and wiser we started the concept of postponement effect basically you don't convert your fg let it be in tanks and you don't pack it because your aging starts when you pack a product right you might have a lot of active ingredient in a drug and pharma place but you don't start a expiry date of it unless you pack it yes the shelf life of the raw material of course needs to be extended right so that's the learning we had which by the way improved significantly our inventory uh, carrying cost because now i am carrying inventory in raw materials not in finished good and hence i am not uh, paying a lot of inventory carrying cost in the system the third impact which happened was wave three eventually we were not very sure whether we should invest in capacities because india was not growing world was not growing no one was buying anything everyone thought it's the end of the world covid will kill all of us the human civilization will finish uh, thankfully we as human species are very resilient uh, and interconnected and our pharma and medical uh, teams really helped us get back to work uh, most of us are back to office so thanks a lot for the people from pharma and medicine sector over last 3 years i believe the doomsday exercise which we tried to do did not help because obviously you did not build to the capacity and how what you call in marketing terminology lipstick effect wherein the customers are now going and thronging every place you try to find a a place in a aircraft today impossible right i traveled recently last week from mumbai to aurangabad jam packed because of g20 summit i am out of stock in most places right which means i need more capacity build up which means i need to import more beer which means i need more containers which means both for raw material and finished goods which means i people are looking to buy more of better brand moving to a purchasing power parity right all this in total was a great learning that the supply chain has to have two words not english but in practice one is resilience second is agility and people generally get confused between resilience and agility resilience is about springing back which is what covid taught all of us as human civilization agility is all about how quickly are you able to spring back right and those two terms to me are what i learned during these 3 years which probably made me a true supply chain professional and i believe that has helped us evolve a lot more in terms of not just financial kpis but also understanding the nuts and bolts of the business which otherwise always would have been covered by a lead or a lag indicator of a kpi right so those are key learnings i touch wood feel there should be no more black swan events but if there are more i think we as a organization we as supply chain professionals we as people looking at insurance logistics containers cost commodity conflict and covid slash any other uh, black swan event are much more ready much more prepared to take next level of a more informed insight based decisions hope that helps uh, ravi to the questions yeah thank you very much uh, akilesh in fact uh, uh, the, the one point which you said uh, now i am able to recollect that uh, if, we, if we all remember that when the lockdown was lifted the first permission was given to the wine shop Uh, then people had uh, criticized uh, the, the government's move, saying that uh, why the liquor shops have been opened uh, uh, during the after the first wave when the uh, restrictions were lifted. The first one was to open the uh, 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 wine shop, and there was a huge uh, crowd across the country, uh, length and breadth of the country. That uh, uh, there was a huge lines uh, uh, in front of the wine shop. So now we understand that why it has happened. uh thank you uh, akilesh uh, on this insight and now coming to the uh, coming to mr rahul sharma uh, we would like to know that uh, how uh, how you have uh, what are the measures you have taken to minimize the uh, losses for your products 
uh, or what are these uh, precautions you have taken so that uh, uh, your final delivery can be achieved so that your trade trade losses can be cut down from the covid as well as the war like situation uh, not war like situation the war which is currently happening the current geopolitical situation which is happening uh, in the world how uh, we would like to know from you yeah, thanks ravi i think this is a very pertinent question and especially uh, in the pharma industry it is it is pretty relevant because of few reasons because one is uh, we have most of our medicines which is temperature controlled second is uh, we have very high value medicines uh one one con one container can be say like 300 to 400000 us dollars so the risk is, is was pretty high and especially in times like covid or or war situation or whatever global supply chain disruptions are going on it's pretty uh difficult to make sure uh, the the supplies are are continued because we because Ak akhil said uh, people uh, had to survive without beer but i think people could survive without beer but not <laughs> without medicines and uh, uh and from in fresenius kabi we uh, from from india we supply anti cancer medicines to more than 70 countries and that made the challenges pretty pretty uh, in, in multifold uh, but having said that because we had a responsibility to our patients we had to continue our supplies uh, we took various measures to make sure the supplies are continued without uh, much losses and and thankfully uh, we survived over this period as akhil also also mentioned we survived this period and uh we did not have much losses and which which uh, indicates that humans are are pretty resilient and especially indians i think that's a very good demonstration so first thing which we did was instead of staggered deliveries what we did was uh, have a dedicated vehicle and consolidation of uh, various deliveries because at that moment of time uh, there were limited airlines which were functioning limited transport vehicles were uh, available so what we did was instead of supplying every day what we used to do is uh, we consolidated everything and we used to supply uh, once in a week kind of thing and second was because we had to increase our our capacity so what we did was uh, we we kind of changed the design of the pallets uh, wherein we increased the size uh, the, the height and width of the pallet so that the same pallet can accommodate more uh, more number of vials uh, third was because the challenge was the sanitization uh, which is why i think uh, in fresenius kabi and especially in pharma we had a very stringent control mechanism over the sanitization of the warehouses over the vehicles because that that was the major risk of the contamination because if you, if your medicines are contaminated then uh, the entire shipment can be at, at a loss uh, and no insurance company would would basically accept it if you have uh, if you don't have those sanitization measures which you are required to to follow i think that was the bigger risk so uh, so we had a very we, we took very stringent controls over not only our warehouses our factories but also the drivers which were coming the sanitization of their vehicles uh, uh, appropriately and we had a uh, sop etc as per our global quality standards that i think really helped us the third was uh, because of the limited airlines which were functioning so uh, i think that was the opportunity which which really came in a very big way to us and which is why i think the difficult times uh, always teach us how to how to uh, perform more effectively and efficiently because uh, we started because before covid we were supplying everything through air and then we realized it is not possible to to continue with that and then we started uh, increasing our sea shipments and today we we supply at least our 60 to 70% volume through sea Uh, so that was the opportunity but at that time because of the limited airlines availability etc we had to move to sea but now that's an opportunity for us fourth was uh, because there was a shortage of labor shortage of people so what we uh, ensured that we we hired few uh, local pgs or or hotels to make sure people do not have to go outside of the containment zone because uh, there were containment zones etc so uh so our our teams are our factory people our warehouse people i mean they were like uh, in those hotels leaving their families for at least a month to make sure that the production continues the supply continues and then there is no risk of uh, any contamination etc so i think these these were few uh, mechanism which we uh, made sure that the supplies continues and without any minim, without any major losses and we succeeded and, and i think today uh, as akhil also mentioned sibesh also mentioned that now we are 
much more confident that we can we can deal whether it is covid or it is a war or any kind of global disruptions i mean we are much more equipped to handle those kind of challenges Ahul, one more thing which we would like to know since uh, you said that uh, uh, you are into pharmaceutical uh, uh, company and the products are temperature uh, uh, controlled one so during this uh, tough times how you were able to uh, maintain and ensure that the adequate temperatures are maintained throughout the journey right from your warehouse till the it reaches the final uh, destination or the final warehouse how you were able to maintain did you face yeah. any such uh, problem wherein uh, the or face any such problems or losses where which has resulted from uh, uh, fluctuation in temperatures because of some negligence or something good question i think there were a lot of temperature aspects and cases which significantly increased because Uh, the quality of the airline uh, airline was was not there and very limited airlines were available so the temperature aspersion was was a big risk so there were a couple of measures we took one was uh, uh, we we moved from the the passive uh, solution of maintaining the temperature of 2 to 8 degrees to uh, to a kind of validated boxes and i think uh, if if you know uh, that that's a really uh, innovation during covid times Uh, which most of the vaccine manufacturer also followed because if you remember there was a uh, big debate how a country like such a vast country how do we make sure to supply all the medicines all the vaccinations to 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 last mile and that was the challenge for for everybody and i think that's where the innovation of the validated boxes came in wherein you can uh, because before that there were gel packs the ice packs uh, which were there because the quality of the airlines was was pretty good because they also used to make sure but during covid times uh, because of the limited availability uh, that that was not possible and and there were a lot of temperature excursion cases so i think we followed the validated boxes uh, which can validate your temperature for next say 72 hours 100 hours uh, along with the with the gel pack and the second was in all our c uh, shipments what we did was uh, a data logger real time tem- temperature con- uh, monitoring device which we installed from our side so that was an investment from our side but uh, that helped us because we uh, we work for fda we we, we work for european authorities etc drug authorities so we had to make sure and demonstrate that there was no temperature excursion so we invested that and and that really helped us so these were couple of mechanisms we we took uh, which really helped us yeah yeah thank you mr rahul it's a wonderful insight then how to handle the uh, temperature control cargo uh, to our audience uh, now mr uh, sibes uh, i would like to open our uh, i would request you to tell that how the risk management efforts in uh, will bring down the losses uh, for the businesses during the shipment whether it is uh, uh, depending upon the type nature of the cargo okay uh, uh, but if i may have 2 minutes on that covid issue i think i have a couple yeah, of yeah, nice sure. so uh, akil uh, while we were not insuring uh, in bef <laughs> we were insuring some other uh, beer manufacturer the and uh, what happened was uh, these movements from the factories from the uh, factories moved to the depots and this was in the month of 24th march i think was the first total lockdown that was declared and uh, possibly these left around 20th 21st of march and from uh, karnataka or some places some of these shipments were going to uh, uh, hot and humid uh, entire countries practically or a boiling point at that point in time and yep. so what happened in some of these places in uh, odisha uh, two places i think whether it was sambalpur and one more place the trucks reached the depots but there was nobody in the port to unload the cargo and uh, <laughs> we had a catch 22 situation and uh, uh, so uh, what happened during these situations like covid you will also be remarkable that uh, people had abandoned the trucks the drivers and they were all lying on the road but i think all the people who otherwise would steal and do they were also inside the house so fortunately we didn't have too many theft cases <laughs> but yeah. as luck would have it um, some of these beers when they are exposed to very high temperatures actually i think the uh, a, a, the the cans burst open you will understand it better and you can explain it better and what, what happened was the the topmost layer which is on on which the tarpaulin is poured 
those exploded which led to the cardboard cartons uh, collapsing and it just percolated down and we had substantial losses over there and we actually ended up paying for those as well because we had also given some extension of cover to uh, so insurers generally are very kind people people may not agree but <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had that uh, authorization to get myself insured. So, uh, that so time. we, so we actually, in most cases, when people uh, were worried, so what happened over there? When goods are in between the transit, it's it's neither your way nor my way. It's uh, yeah. so it's in the ordinary course of transit. We said the cover continues, not a restrictive cover. When it reaches the destination town, city, there are limitation about seven days or whatever the uh, port authority say sixty days. There again, insurers did allow 30 to 60 days extension with a sl small premium as well. So uh, to that extent, I think, uh, so this was a pretty large claim. In fact, uh, three, four trucks, this happened. Initially, we said this is inherent vice. Our insurance parlance say that this is not going to be external. But anyway, we will not go into the uh, reasoning, but we finally ended up. And on the pharmaceutical side, you're right, uh, Rahul. Uh, as insurers, I'll give you an example. Uh, we were part of the consortium that was insuring Sputnik that was coming from Russia. And these were very high value uh, shipments initially that were coming. And the whole leg from Russia to uh, Hyderabad and then to uh, DRL labs and from there to the last leg. Honestly, while that uh, vaccine didn't take off, but honestly, we never had a single loss. Uh, in fact, I'm aware even Serum Institute, which was uh, providing this uh, COVID shield, which is most extensively used, have one of the most excellent uh, track records. So I think uh, the pharmaceutical industry to that extent, and when you're talking about life-saving drugs and um, injectables, I think these uh, new techniques that have come in of storing, carrying, and especially that last mile where the doctor himself carries it. Pehle to thermos mein leke jate the. Yeah. But I think a lot of positives have happened. Uh, so I think COVID was a learning for us as well. And I think uh, uh, it was also scary that cargoes were lying in the tarmac. Uh, there was nobody to clear the cargo. Uh, really large uh, ships getting quarantined, ships getting diverted. Uh, it was pretty a uh, nightmare of situation. We also had a situation where uh, for some of these uh, very large cargoes, we also do some inspections before acceptance. Surveyors were not willing to come and see. So we had to go and so we had to also change ourselves to remote video. Uh, we could do thanks to all these WebEx and these uh, teams meeting that we were able to see and guide. So to that extent, insurance industry also uh, transformed itself to meet with the challenges of the COVID. Uh, coming to your other question, uh, Ravi, on risk management, I think risk management is a way of life for most uh, large corporates and multinationals, of course, have their own SOPs with regard to everything. But I think the first and foremost, if people remember, you act as if uninsured. If you did not have insurance, what would you do? Whether it is to uh, know your customers, know your income terms, those are very elementary things. But we've seen a huge amount of uh, problems that happen, packing. Packing, uh, people uh, just pack it. But uh, to tell you a fact, we pay a large majority of claims, we say, for jerks and jewels. Why should I pay for jerks and jewels? Wo Bombay ki train mein chalte hi hamara the jerks and jewels hamare to sab haddi toot jane chahiye thi. Par hum log to phir bhi koi kuch nahi hota hai. So I think packaging improvements and uh, people have to realize not only the containerized portion of the transit, but what happens after it is decontainerized at the port, if it is FCL, LCL, you need to take care of the worst leg of the journey. So I think packaging improvement should help. Selection of containers, I think, is a huge thing. We've seen uh, sometimes holes in containers. People do not uh, check it well. When it comes to uh, temperature sensitive, uh, Rahul, you'll be surprised. We were uh, we had a large claim wherein the, uh, by mistake, uh, minus 6 degrees, likhne ki jagah pe, uh, the company put in plus 6 degrees. The entire container load was a complete mess. So I'm saying... Even the instructions to the logistics operators and do you have SOPs for quick uh, recovery in case one truck fails? What is your way to uh, retrieve those? And uh, the other thing, of course, is I think uh, selection of your career makes a lot of difference. People try and go in for the cheapest freight and end up uh, uh, paying for losses. And then most of the times, uh, if there are good shipping companies and airlines, you can also have a good amount of recovery. 
So if I pay 100 rupees to you as claim, I'm also able to recover because of their negligence. If I'm able to prove, they also uh, give us. So I think selection of the career is an extremely important thing. And uh, I think uh, the uh, other thing is just keep your insurers informed. If there is a change, let's say uh, from Mumbai instead of Calcutta, you're taking the goods to Chennai. Keep us informed. It's not that we will not insure you. If you inform me well in advance, you let me know. I think uh, trust in your insurers. Make those rightful declarations to the insurers. And uh, I think act as if uninsured, whether it is selection of your career, whether it's the selection of your uh, customers, looking at the documents. You're seeing a lot of documentary frauds nowadays happening as well, which is, again, because everybody is now looking at only uh, uh, documentation, which is online. And uh, I think the answers will lie with the insurers themselves. But yes, we as insurance company also have our responsibility. Like, for instance, we at HDFC also have marine loss control engineering uh, section. We've got uh, our risk engineer who will, if there are frequency losses or uh, a strange sort of a loss, he will try and go check the warehouses, check the, uh, the logistics. We do sometimes logistics audit. If those uh, recommendations from there are also complied with, I think uh, a lot of losses we have seen in the past have actually come down. But then everybody tries to be uh, penny wise, pound foolish. They try and save on those expenses, chota chota packing corrections, kahin pe kuch. Agar karenge to, I think uh, people should be able to manage the losses far better. We have more attritional losses than severity losses. So attritional losses are small losses. I think insurance, uh, the client should be willing to say, okay, up to 10,000 rupees or 25,000, I will not even claim. It's a waste of time for you, a waste of time for us. So I think uh, the more and more you become uh, conscious about the time and effort that goes into a claim, lodging of a claim, we are not sitting with a checkbook as well. Isn't it? Even the best of insurers take time. So I think uh, those are ways and means where I think a lot of losses can be uh, controlled, managed. And for the rest, insurance companies will be there and pay. The, the coverages are far and wide. And brokers like Ravi Chandran expand the scope of cover even bigger and bigger without increasing the premiums. <laughs> but So that's how the world grows. I think uh, there's a lot more that the customers can do on their own. You don't need an insurance company to tell Rahul how he needs to protect his cargo. He knows the cargo well. He know, has his... Uh, SOPs, international SOPs, Akhil knows how to manage his uh, transport operators, the contracts. I think those are the areas of improvement that we can see. Uh, thank you, Sibesh. Uh, there is a question from the audience. One Mr. Abhishek Math Mathur, he is uh, GM Varshila. So he is asking whether uh, uh, the, uh, the, the minus 6 degree or plus 6 degree goof off is a serious issue, uh, whether the really it has happened. So that is the first part of the question which he uh, which he has asked. It's a, it's a live case. It's a live it's, case. It's a live case. Okay. It, it did happen. Yeah. And secondly, uh, he wants to know that uh, how can an insurance company make the settlement easy for small issues? So uh, two or three things. One, uh, as I said, if you take a reasonable amount of deductible that you don't claim for small amounts, then uh, those attritional losses go off the radar. Up to a point, you can also ask the insurance company to go in for a self-survey, which means Watsila and their risk engineers or their own offices are able to uh, certify that, yes, the cargo is damaged or this much, up to, let's say, a lakh or so people do allow. So those small claims can easily be attended. And then uh, the third point is that maybe you could also get into a MOU with the insurance company wherein uh, a reasonable amount of uh, time schedules uh, both the parties can agree to on settlement of claims what happens in case of a total loss what happens in case of a non-delivery within how much time you don't wait for the final police report so you settle those claims in 60 days against a letter of indemnity what are the general documents you will ask for damages so if you agree on those aspects and then you should also encourage your insurance companies if they can also automate some of the processes whereby you could lodge the claims online, submit the papers online, and the smaller claims can also be attended by the insurers online. I think uh, faster settlements can happen. Uh, so you mean to say that uh, the documents sent by the uh, scanned copy of the documents can be used for settlement yeah. of the claim or yeah. you need an original document like bill of lading and invoice and all original you will insist. Agar, 
अगर देखिए बड़ा क्लेम है और टोटल लॉस सिचुएशन है आई मे आस फॉर दोज ओरिजिनल डॉक्यूमेंट्स बट फॉर द स्मॉलर मल्टीट्यूड ऑफ स्मॉलर क्लेम्स आई एम टॉकिंग विच कैन बी अटेंडेड दीज कैन बी अटेंडेड ऑन सॉफ्ट फॉर्म ओनली You yeah. don't need the originals. Yeah, thank you, Sivesh. Uh, one more question to Mr. Rahul uh, from the same gentleman. He is asking, how would consumer know that the medicine it is uh, it is consuming has not experienced the disaster? Yes, yeah, so I think there. I think regulatory authorities are there to protect you. Okay. Uh, because we need to maintain all the uh, e log of log log book of everything. at every minute what is the temperature what is the composition what are the uh, quality measures we have taken not only in, in the manufacturing facility but also on the way till the till the last point when it is uh, to a hospital we need to maintain all the records and regulatory authorities uh, on a regular interval they come and check those records uh, so that because they they it, this is their responsibility to ensure that whatever consumer is consuming Uh, is at the best of the quality standards which are expected and uh, desired by the regulatory authorities so don't worry about that i can add to this point ravi if you want yeah uh, so very good question because uh, that plus 6 and minus 6 as a delta for example and i worked on blockchain initially in my life uh, while black blockchain is like 10 15 20 years when the whole ecosystem becomes like a worldwide web equivalent but what we saw is industry 4.0 in the process right that's what rahul alluded to there are checks and balances and the checks and balances could be immutable these checks and balances could be really real time and these checks and balances could be sacrosanct and how do you do that by putting iot devices which directly talk to the cloud so that sibesh when he looks into a particular data entry record doesn't look at excel sheet because excel sheet if you have it i have it is the same example you know uh, four students came late for uh, for the test and professor asked what happened they said the car tire got flat that's a live right live example in in supply chains right and the question paper was tell me which tire and all four answers were different right so immutable ledgers would be the name of the game tomorrow i believe that also answers the question which was asked to sibesh from a gentleman wherein if the claim needs to be verified and it goes through a trustless window which is through an you know cloud based non human interfaced app like a iot device i think that's where the world will become more uh, faster better insightful and uh, insurance claims could be done better and rahul will not have to justify this question anymore so uh, that's that's my point on how the things will happen the second point to the first question which you asked is and it's it's also for life insurance right leave only cargo insurance cargo insurance as well but a people don't know the exact inco terms they just see the lowest quote oh fob cif great i'll go for fob i'll not go for cif right now no one has insured you during the transit right now what happens in that case is you went with the lowest quote and there are something called as uh, asterisks and uh, things to be uh, read below the caption lines you don't read them and you don't read them because you feel you have taken adequate insurance that's where the xyz axis of impact frequency and scale comes into picture right uh, the example of beer i would have taken insurance but maybe 600 vehicles standing uh, i never assume that this will be the level of impact i will have which runs into millions of dollars i was sure this frequency will be once in a lifetime not every day right and the scale of it would have been limited to a particular state not pan india or globally right these things are evolving continuously in the supply chain world so automation iot 4.0 or industry 4.0 as you call it and then gauging the right terms of trade is how the world should move if you have to do a really uh, holistic supply chain management hope that helps thank you okay uh, for the insight uh sibesh uh, there is one more question for you saying that if the transit uh, the carrier provides the insurance why should i bring uh, buy a separate insurance if the transit insurance is provided by the carrier why should an uh, uh, consigner or consignee should buy an insurance sibesh so you are on coach can you repeat the question i couldn't hear you correctly 
uh, the question is that if the carrier is providing the marine insurance, why should an consignor or consignee take separate marine insurance? So it's a choice that you have in the sense that technically, if you ask me, a carrier does not have any insurable interest. He is only uh, facilitating arrangement of insurance. It is either the consigner or consignee who does it. But there are cases, let us say uh, a DHL arranges for insurance from the pickup point to delivery. They do have some things, but they are, uh, we call them the shipper's interest insurances and they are covered under the marine policies. So if you are fully aware that the carrier has taken a policy, which will, uh, because uh, sometimes in their way bill, uh, they say with insurance, without insurance, they checkbox that as well. In certain cases, some of the insurer, uh, the logistics operators provide, but a vast majority of these, uh, if uh, you have not checked with those logistics operators, maybe he's taken it for a small amount. So you'll have to be very clear if truly the uh, transporter has taken the policy, then maybe you don't need that insurance policy additionally. There is no need for two insurance policies to exist. But make sure that in case of a loss or damage, the claim is settled with you and not with the transporter as much as possible. Because in marine insurance, uh, there is something called insurable interest, which says it doesn't matter who takes the insurance, whether you have insurable interest at the time of policy or not, but you should have it at the time of loss. Uh, as Akhil rightly uh, spoke about the INCO terms. In a CIF, the seller is arranging for insurance. The buyer right now does not have the goods nor anything. But at the end of the day, the risk will get transferred to uh, Rahul sitting in UK. And then tomorrow, the claimant would be Rahul. So it's a freely assignable document like any other documents like a bill of lading and others. So I think uh, if, a, if you are very sure that the transporters arrange for you an adequate insurance, then you don't need an additional, but uh, please check those documents. What is it they cover? Uh, is he supposed to, uh, is he guaranteeing that he will take care of all? Nowadays, at least on the domestic front, a lot of these new age web aggregators are also arranging for insurance. Uh, and uh, But in certain cases, people like delivery today, which is a 3PL, one of the largest, they have certain insurances that they have taken. But uh, in certain cases, uh, we as cargo insurers have insured them. And if there is any loss or damage during transit, we make good those losses. So insured need not take additional policies. Uh, one more question to Sibesh and jointly to Akhil. Uh, this is from Mr. Abhishek Mathur, Varshila, GM. He uh, is asking why the insurance wording cannot be standardized uh, rather than uh, getting into the trap of lower pricing in uh, inco terms for FOB or maybe a C, uh, a C and F, uh, uh, so, that, so, so, uh, so why to get on the unnecessary on the trap on this pricing? So the wording part, I think Sibesh can answer. It's a standardized wording and the uh, uh, pricing part, I think Akhil can take care. So quickly, as far as the wordings are concerned, uh, I honestly, I'm not really getting what your question is. Uh, as far as the marine pricing is concerned, it's quite uh, reasonably, we are a very soft country where the pricing is pretty low and we hardly differentiate on the price front too much on the FOB or on a CIF thing. It is not too much of a difference. But if some uh, prudent underwriter like Ravi has done the policy, maybe he may charge you a differential premium. But from a coverage perspective or from the wordings, most of the uh, internationally marine policies are written as per the institute clauses, which are except uh, done at the uh, at London Institute of Underwriters. And uh, some of them are the US wordings, some of them are the Nordic wordings, but I think the wordings are quite uh, standardized. It is only some of these non-institute clauses, which are uh, the broker wordings, which can be slightly confusing. But uh, I think uh, a majority of clauses are otherwise standardized, even policy wordings in most cases are there. But the beauty about marine is that uh, it's like the word which means water. You fit it into any container, a glass, it fits into a, it takes a different shape. You put it in a different picture, it takes a different shape. So the, the beauty about marine is no two policies are absolutely ditto, similar to the fact that no two commodities or no two shipments are absolutely same. So uh, completely standardizing it would mean uh, tariff creation of tariff, which in marine was done away in 1994. And since then, we neither have wording tariff 
nor the pricing tariff like in fire that you currently have so uh, i don't know if you wish to introduce tariff i'll be the happiest person on earth <laughs> uh, yeah to uh, me so, yeah uh, to me yeah. the uh, wording itself like cif means cost insurance freight fo uh, fob means free on board right so these are very standard terms and these are very standard legally complied well written statutory guidelines globally right because shipping is a global industry it's not a specific state industry right arbitrations can vary that's a different question but uh, the question i think is genesis from why can't you have everything cif why can't you have everything fob why can't you have everything for uh, yes. yes you can but then you need to be also understanding the contractual terms with whom you are having a discussion because if i am a uh, distributor and i already have an insurance cover why will i have a double insurance right if i want a bond to bond custom to custom transfer why on uh, earth will i have a extra cost to be done because please understand if you have a cif as a insurance term i will charge you for the cif money and if it's in india government will charge you gst on it right so there are taxes implications on it then there is cif reversals uh, i mean the uh, inco term reversals for example in india i come from an industry which is not under gst right so if i do a cif term inco term in india maybe the taxes for me is not being absorbed by the distributor which means my cost of service or total cost of ownership increases and these are commercial negotiations which you do with customers like i service 27 countries from india and icia which is vietnam india thailand to belgium us canada mexico everywhere uh, in the same country uh, two distributors might like to have two different in, uh, inco terms because their way and operation model is different one of them for example delhi uh, distributor would like uh, bond to bond transfer which means you pay the excise duty before the other would like custom to custom transfer because he does not want to pay duty till he starts selling the product so why should i upfront block my duty which is multiple of uh, 10 per, 100% of the cost of goods it then comes into the question of cash flow optimization and also it's not only insurance it's the cash flow optimization working capital of a business and their appetite to take it uh, the, uh one more question from mr uh, shantanu this i will take it is war risk covered yes uh, it can be covered as an add on cover mr shantanu war can be covered as an add on to the uh, basic uh, marine insurance policy uh, by paying an additional premium previously there was a war tariff separate premium was there but now the one pricing it is inbuilt in the common pricing of marine policy but yes war risk can be covered only when the war clause is getting attached and it will be subject to the regulations as and uh, uh, which is dynamic and depending upon the situation current situation uh, which is uh, uh, ukraine russia war so as sibesh has pointed out that uh, the entire indian marine underwriters have come together and they have created a pool for supporting providing the war risk cover for which the premium whatever they get it they will cede it to the uh, uh, marine pool so uh, uh, war war can be covered as an add on cover it is not automatically covered in the prime uh, marine policy institute cargo clauses war is an exclusion war or srcc is an exclusion so you need to uh, take it as an add on cover uh, previously separate pricing was being charged for each add on cover but now it is inbuilt under the uh, the common pricing which is charged under your marine policy hello yeah i think that's fine yeah so uh, shantanu i think all the questions have been answered any 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 other questions from the audience there, the there is a follow, there is a follow up question uh, yeah. to a question which asked if war risk insurance is covered so i guess the second part of the question is uh, i i hope i'm uh, narrating this correctly but is there an all risk policy which includes everything sir uh, there is a policy the most uh, commonly used policy is uh, we call it institute cargo clause uh, a and uh, for the domestic policies it is england transit clause a these are all risk with named exclusion so what i insure i am not writing everything under other than those named exclusions which is bad packaging inherent vice uh, 
so those are the few things that are get excluded rest all what is not in those exclusions are there so generally in common parlance you call it all risk the word is slightly uh, a misnomer because def definitely there are certain obligations they can't be something called an uh, uh, everything and anything under the sun so there is a limit to an all risk that we give but we believe that's the biggest the widest cover that is given is called all risk some of the uh, customers for instance let's say uh, rahul in his case uh, while delay howsoever causes the normal exclusion since he is dealing in pharmaceutical he will say in case of time excursion it goes beyond 72 hours he will say that my gel packs won't work and my cargo will become a loss so i want you to cover me against a delay beyond the ordinary course of transit and he will, the pharmaceutical industry may ask for an extension like that it is up to the insurance company to say yes at what price or say no it's his prerogative but yes these are extension for instance importers of coal uh, now spontaneous combustion is an inherent vice some things will happen always and coal nobody will insure without inherent vice right. so right. then you will come back to the insurer ki bhai ye jo aapka exclusion hai isko hata dijiye kuch specific hmm. agar hai please come back to the insurers there are solutions there may be a price to it or maybe right. he will say no i can't do it then you look at another insurer so there are but there is nothing called matlab hindi mein jisko bolte hain sarva jokhim aisa bol ke kuch cheez nahi hai kuch limitations okay, hai hamari got it just in time for last two questions i don't understand this may be a technical term the question yeah. is what about a with average policy with average policy aajkal issue nahi hoti hai ye policies ye uh, 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 hum log apne losses ko na average bolte hain ye When somebody is doing fire insurance and all, उसमे वो लोग उसको मतलब सेटलमेंट लेट से द कार्गो वॉज इन वैल्यूड एट टेन लाख रुपीज यू इन शॉर्ट फॉर फाइव लाख रुपीज एंड आई विल पे यू इन प्रपोर्शन सो उनके उसमें एवरेज उसको बोलते हैं बट इन मरीन कार्गो द डैमेज इज कॉल्ड एवरेज आइदर इट इज अ पर्टिकुलर एवरेज विच इज अ पार्शल लॉस and uh, a total loss is a constructive total loss or natural total loss. So all the policies are with average. there is no policy there are sometimes insurers do i'll give you an example uh, uh, air shipment for instance mm -hmm. you are sending goods from here to us the the aircraft has left so mm -hmm. basically hum log bolte hain ki you should pay premium in advance right. and uh, uh, then only do i give you since you have already the risk is incepted i will say, uh, or maybe there's a livestock over there which i need to insure i will say i will only give you death only cover or a total loss cover which means only if the aircraft goes off in the air i will pay you that claim <laughs> otherwise i don't pay you that claim so then in that case the average does not apply then it is a total loss cover but in most cases our policies are with average one last oh, question is, sir on the screen uh, yeah yeah i will take it uh, uh, santanu how many inco terms will be covered under single open uh, marine open policy the question is from mr amol patel Uh, so, uh, Mr. Amol, uh, whatever the inco terms uh, uh, for which you are using, uh, 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 which you are going to use during the sale uh, or during finalizing the contract, you need to mention it. Uh, uh, you are you need to provide it to the insurer at the time of negotiation and the policy issuance. For example, if you are dealing with FOB shipments, X works, or maybe uh, CIF, so whatever the ter uh, uh, terms of sales are there, you need to uh, mention, uh, declare it to the insurance company, so that the same will get reflected in the policy, and all those inco terms would be co covered under the policy. But during the course of the policy, if you want to add any uh, inco terms, say for example, you have entered into a contract for DAP delivery at place. then in that case you need to endorse the policy by that uh, inco term so that that particular shipment gets covered under the policy i hope your uh, uh, question is answered well yes it seems so, it amol, is amol 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 just one more uh, just to add to it if you uh, i'm sure akhil and others will uh, corroborate that inco terms there are only two places which talks of insurance CIF, which talks of a uh, ICCC, and I think there is a uh, DAP or some place where it talks of an all risk cover. Otherwise, in quote terms, technically doesn't say an insurance has to be. It only tell is telling you where the seller's risk and responsibility ends and where the buyers begin. 
up to what point who is taking the expenses up to beyond which who will take those expenses and insurance is one more arm to it it is all up to you think of it you have um, why is inco terms important at the end of the day i want to know whose loss is it financial loss if the cargo has not reached that is one it helps me the second is basis of valuation aapne cif kar rahe ho fob kar rahe ho to mujhe bhi pata chalta hai fob hai ki cif hai us basis of valuation mein bhi farak padta hai export shipments agar aapka fob aap cif kar rahe ho then tomorrow you will ask me to settle the claims in foreign currency even though that insurance premium has not been remitted into this country in foreign exchange then i will not be able to settle that also so basis of valuation also has an impact due to the inco terms so inco terms we make too much of it some of us insurers also write that the policy will be uh, in uh, conformity with the uh, inco terms, terms but nothing prevents you for asking for more for instance fob today fob plus seller's interest which is the overseas voyage is also covered we insure it Re- reverse your importing cif i give buyers, you a buyers interest buyers also so, so you disclose the fact to the insurers there are solutions to it as well don't make too much of uh, inco terms no they are there it is for the the people like uh, akhil and rahul they will know what they are doing because it's very important today aaj bhi log uh, containerized shipment mein fob term use karte hain they should be using fca fca because you are not responsible it is the shipping company ko to aapne wahan pe container freight station mein aapne saman de diya abhi aap fob lekar ho aapke paas control nahi hai so i think those help the customer to decide up to what point on from where and the rightful uh, inco terms to choose yeah i mean to add to what uh, uh, you are saying uh, sibesh basically inco term is only is only to ascertain the change of hands and liability it doesn't do more than that uh, beyond it i mean of course agar change of hand mein cif hai to uh, the inco term just puts the liability or the assertion to the person who is selling that's about it right oh, how much it is covered how much is insured is then the final tune or final script within that cif policy document correct over to you ashantanu thank you sir thank you very okay thank you so much gentlemen so this uh, was our panel on the future of shipping and marine insurance uh, in a constantly changing business landscape i'd like to thank ravi chandran sir who's the practice leader marine with mahindra insurance brokers limited to have moderated the session wonderfully i think uh, the discussion the q and a was all at par i'd like to thank all the distinguished members of the panel starting with uh, mr sain who's the executive vice president with hdfc ergo Uh, Akhil sir is director supply chain with AB Inbev and Rahul sir is the CFO and head supply chain with uh, Freshness Kabi I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly thank you so much gentlemen Ravi sir would you like to conclude yeah thank you for uh, thank you all for participating in this webinar and uh, we will try to arrange for more such webinars with more distinguished speakers to enrich your knowledge on marine insurance as well as the shipping industry thank you very much my thank you very much in thank case you. you want to stay ravi sir in case you want to stay the panelists can leave in case you want to stay for one last question which is on your screen yeah what is that uh, what is the impact on policy under high c sale so high c sales can be covered under the policy at the time of negotiation you can mention that this uh, type of this leg of insurance is also covered so that takes care of that normally you need to mention and what will be the turnover or expected based on the previous year's turnover you need to mention it to the disclose it to the insurance company and then it can be incorporated in the policy <laughs> anything you want to add sibesh sir on ic sales no 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 this is good enough i think ic sales is again uh, sometimes uh, where is the risk getting transferred and sometimes the yes. values also change on ic change. sales those right. are things that you need to take care of yes this is very common in case of bulk shipments and others which yeah. are happening very often uh, just to look at the documents at the time of claim is very important and where the risk transfer is happening thank you okay thank you thank so thank much you. thank you it was a, it was a pleasure having you all over thank, thank you so thanks much. everybody thank thanks thanks akhil thanks rahul thank thanks, thanks everyone thank you Bye.